got one. Uh oh. Now this. That's a striper. This is probably a striper oh. right here. This week on Kentucky Field. There we go. There's one. In nice. The it's hard to think of a fish that fights harder or tastes better than a striped bass. Next. Coming in over, Rachel. Dove season is one of the best times of year to introduce youngsters to the outdoors. Yes! And then we're taking a look at one of the many quota hunts Kentucky has to offer. It's all next on Kentucky Field. It's a pretty fish. Beautiful. This pond is plum loaded with frogs. They're everywhere in here. <laughs> Yeah, this is a good fish right here. Really good fish. Come here, girl. Hey, boy. That's a big rabbit. Nice job. Yes! Yes! <laughs> My first musket. <laughs> first say Leo. Yeah, we're getting here to keep her. Here it goes. Oh. Boom. Oh. Oh. Wow, that happened. Hello, and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. Beautiful Lake Cumberland is a destination location for many tourists, but for the anglers, they pretty much go there for the stripers. This morning, we're here on beautiful Lake Cumberland with Captain Jeff Bardroff. We're going after one of my favorite fish to put on a plate, the striper. Are you cooler up here, Chad? Yeah, I just got a couple drinks in there and some ice. Well, thanks for having us out. Thanks for coming out. Uh, this ought to be a blast. Uh, I've been wanting to get a, a nice early start. What is your favorite way to catch these uh, stripers? I prefer casting for them, which I don't get to do very much now since I got. But. Yeah, yeah. Let's get some lines in the water and see if we can get some fish in the boat. This isn't a circle hook, it's a kale hook, right? I do have some circle hooks, some kale hooks. Okay. And what, what size is that? That's a two out. Okay. Tell me what that the purpose of that little tab on there that is. Little, that little tab's to keep these bait from foul hooking. I like going right through the nostrils with them. And this is gonna be one that goes on the side there, Chad. Look at that bait. It looks beautiful. Today you've got, got a mixture of planter boards and down lines. I you do. Got six down lines. And 10 boards will run today. Let's get my speed right. I'd like to be about 0 0.8 miles per hour right now. That's going to be Oh, now we got, now we got one. Uh-oh. Now this, that's a striper. This is probably a striper oh. right here. Hey, when it when it starts to rain, it pours, huh? It's, today it's pouring fish. <laughs> that's a good thing. First, first striper bite of the day. There we go. There we go. There we go. There's one in nice. the Nice. That's nice. why we came out here right there. All right. Now, these okay. fish these fish need to be 22 inches, right? And you're allowed two per person. That's right. And this fish here, what do you think we're looking at? Uh, we're looking at 28. Let's, let's say, let's let's say let's 26, 28. I think you're probably right on it. You know it better than me. It's 29 and a half. 29 and a half. Fantastic. We will take it. Very nice. Let's see if we can do it again. Let's do it. What's your what's the biggest one you've seen? 38 uh, is the biggest that's been on my boat. Okay. I'm trying to break that 40 inch mark. Maybe we can do it today. Uh oh, fish on, fish on. There we go. Guess what rod that is. Uh oh, yeah, it sure is. <laughs> you know, it's funny. It's funny because you said when you came out here, you've been trying your best to retire this rod, but it's always the one that goes it, off. It is. It's turning the boat, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> what have we got here? Taking the whole board and going. There he is, upside down. You've got him tired now. Wore him down. It's a pretty good fish. It's the reason you come down here to catch them right there. Yeah, it's almost like the exact same fish. About the same year, same class, isn't it? Sure is. Jeff, you said a couple years ago you hooked your very first striper, and from there it was over. You uh, 
couldn't get enough time on the water, huh? No, I, I didn't even land them. I just hooked them. <laughs> it was just a fight to the boat. Um, I lost them right at the boat. I was by myself, and it was kind of hard to net a fish by yourself. Oh, yeah. Especially when you're new yeah. and you're pumped up and the adrenaline's flowing. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been my obsession since that first fish. Oh, here we go, here we go. You got one down? down oh, line. yeah, we got a down rod here. Oh, wow, look at that pole. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> What have you got there? Oh! <laughs> hey, this is how you got hooked the first time. That isn't is. It? <laughs> oh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. There we go. These down lines. I, he's about the same size about fish. The same I tell size, you, but yeah. that fight was a lot different on the down line. <laughs> I looked over, then you go, here we go, and the rod tip was literally in the water. A good way in the water. <laughs> He is a hard fighting fish to be 24 inches. That's what that fish is, 24, 24 inches? 24 inch fish. Fish on. There you go. Does it feel like it is a striper? Yeah, it's a striper. I don't know if it's gonna be a 30 plus inch striper, but we'll be okay. That thing's getting bigger, isn't it? I think so. <laughs> oh, that's a good fish. Come on up here, buddy. Hey, that might be the best fish of the day right there. Be close to that 29 inch range, yeah. I believe. We're done. We are done. We have caught our limit. That's two each over 22 inches. And we got uh, we got a couple pushing 30 inches. I'm nice gonna say nice job, man. Another 29, 30 inch fish there, maybe. 29 and a half. It's a good fish right there now. Yo. Well, I'll tell you what, when fish bite like that, we can make it in for breakfast. That's right. <laughs> you know, you come out and you catch your limit, and that's the thing, you know, you got a two fish limit. We got our four fish really fast, and uh, back to the dock. But I know, I, I tell you what, the good thing for you is your morning starts really, really early when you're doing this. Yeah, what time did you get up and start getting back today? It was about 1.50 when I got up. I had my alarm set for two o'clock. That's why, you know, it costs a little bit of money to have a guide because you're gonna have bait when you get down here and you're gonna have the latest fishing report. And uh, you know, that it's worth it. How about some eggs and biscuits? Let's go get that them. That sounds good. <laughs> All right, thanks again. Located 30 miles west of Paducah and bordering the Ohio River is Ballard Wildlife Management Area. This WMA is over 8,000 acres and offers excellent hunting opportunities for waterfowl, deer, turkey, and other small game. The property contains sloughs, hardwoods, open fields, and crop ground that support a variety of wildlife species. In addition, there are also several ponds, a lake, and the river which provide additional public hunting and fishing opportunities. The largest of these lakes, Shelby Lake, has a boat ramp for small watercraft and has campsites located along its bank. There are pre-made waterfowl pits located on the property that can be utilized by hunters during the season, in addition to the existing walk-in and boat-in access. Remember that wildlife management areas must abide by the Kentucky hunting, trapping, and fishing regulations. Also keep in mind that regulations on WMAs often differ from statewide regulations, so be sure to review the hunting guide or website for specific WMA you're hunting. For more information about this WMA or the latest regulations and restrictions that pertain to it, visit our website at fw.ky.gov or call 1-800-858-1549. Dove hunting is one of those unique challenges that can be great for experienced shooters as well as beginners. Coming in over, Rachel. I can't remember how to aim. Look, you move with the bird flying, get in front of it, and pull the trigger, okay? That's the most important thing. If you like try to jerk and stop, that won't work out Is so good. Does it have bullets in it? Not yet. These are called shells. They're shotgun shells. How come mine are yellow? All 20 gauge shells are yellow, so you know every one you're gonna shoot that goes in your gun is going to be what color? Yellow. All right. Your safety is on. Look, I think they got one. Oh, Look. got one, yep. 
Now, keep your barrel always pointed in a safe direction, okay? Right there! Did you get it? Nope. <laughs> well, hey, unload it. That's the way you do it. Right here, Campbell. You got it! I'm gonna go get it! Looks like I brought a hound dog today. It's funny, around the house we find dead birds every now and then and I always tell Campbell, some birds carry diseases, don't pick them up. Well, this is a little different situation when we know the cause of death. Look, Dad, I got it. Perfect. These are really good to eat, too. Shot, Rachel. One comes over and you shoot it with your very first one. Look! That one's a goner. Won't be that one. That won't be our very first one. <laughs> that one went down. Right here, Campbell. Right here, right here. Mm, too low. Too low, that's a good call. They were a little low. Well, we try to bring the kids out every year just to get them involved in hunting and let them have fun. And uh, really, it's more for the kids than anything. Ooh. Chad, you got to kill that bird. Chad, you got to kill that bird. Yes! There you go. Whoa, was that me? I don't know. My first ever! <laughs> well, good job then. That's great. Yeah, we got to find it. There, here, I see it, honey. Right over there. Oh. Is that your first dove? Yes! Say yes! <laughs> yes! Awesome. Nice job. Woohoo! <laughs> Are you excited? Hey, let's go get your hand on your gun and maybe you'll get a shot at another one. Right over you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Look right here. Right here. That's what you want them to do. <laughs> Tell me about it. Um, it has blue eyes. <laughs> Tell me about what happened when it came in. Um, it came in and then me and my dad both shot it and then I shot it right. And then it came over here and I shot it and it fell. Appreciate that. Well, Andy, today is really what all the hard work is about. You come out here and you plant these sunflowers and you put the weed out, and lo and behold, smiles on kids' faces. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I appreciate you having us out. It was a good time. Lots of kids got a ton of birds, and uh, lots of kids got their first bird. Yeah, my daughter Campbell got her very first bird ever, and uh, you know, the birds were flying high. They had a lot of wind, but somebody here got their limit, knocking them down up there high. Yep. <laughs> you love this, don't you? <laughs> I can tell. I can tell you're eat up with it. That's awesome. Tell me how you've planted your fields this year to be successful. I broadcast my field. Anybody can do it. It's a four-wheeler spreader and a disc. Just make sure you disc it, wait two weeks for the weeds to come up, then disc it again, and then the weeds are gone. So you have a weedless field pretty much without chemicals. And then it's seed from Walmart. They'll feed on the millet, but the sorghum brings them in. Um, and the sunflower seeds are just Walmart sunflower seeds. I tell you what, you have a lot of birds, and I can't tell much I appreciate you having us out on this uh, shoot. It was a lot of fun. A lot of kids in the field today. You had 30 hunters, half of them were kids probably, weren't they? Or close to Oh, it. more, yeah. We probably had 25 kids and yeah. 15 adults, so yeah, something was, like that. It was a fantastic hunt. Hey, on every show, I always say thank the landowner. Thank I, you. I appreciate it. Thank Pleasure. you. The eastern flock of the sandhill crane continue to grow, providing a very unique hunting opportunity. It never fails when you put your decoys out in the morning before it's light and you think you've done a really good job. Daybreak comes and they're too tight. I'll set my perimeter first. That way I know that I'm 60 yards from the blind, 70 yards from the blind. That gives me my outer limit. Then I fill in. It makes it appear bigger from the air, makes it appear that there's more. You get them bunched in tight. You know, these birds up in the air, it looks like a really small group, may not be attractive to them. Yeah. 
And sometimes I'll be out here and I'll end up pulling every one of them up and oh, covering yeah. up with grass and then hunting. You know, huh. if there's too much movement in them. Yeah. And you, know, you can't have too much movement. That'll flare them. We usually have a light breeze. They're moving just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they'll move a little bit. And you don't ever want them turning face in the same direction because that's how they act when they see something that's threatening. Yeah. You know, if they see a coyote walking across the field, they're all going to turn and face that direction. Yeah. Well, from the air, that tells other birds, eh, hey, something's wrong. And they're completely non alarm just feeding, doing their thing. Yeah. And you always want more feeders than you do sentries, just like goose decoys. Yeah. All right, let's go move truck. All right, that sounds good. Well, that's our first group, and I hear another one coming. So it looks like we're set up just in time, huh? Yeah, they roost down on Barren River Lake. And about this time every morning, they'll pick up. And they usually come off in groups of 10 or 20 to areas that they know they're going to feed, you know, most likely areas they fed the day before. Now, when they go back to the roost from the field in the evening, they'll pick up in groups of 40 and 50. So here in Kentucky, when do we typically start seeing them and how long will they be here? You'll typically start seeing them come through depending on the weather, the end of October all the way through end of February. I witness sandhill cranes from a distance a lot. Yeah. From a deer stand, I mean, that's the time of oh, year yeah. you really start seeing them and from a boat. Yeah. But to be this close to them, I'm really excited about this. Yeah, I mean, it could happen in a minute or two, or we could be here for a couple hours. It just depends on how they fly. Well, it's beautiful out here, and we're dressed for the cold. So whatever it takes, I'm fine with <laughs> <We're> it. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy every minute of it. Yeah, no doubt. We've already seen our first group of birds. It could happen any time now. Right. The birds that we're going to be paying attention to are going to be coming from in front of us. Okay. Those are the ones that are going to give us some play right over the blind, and that's what we're after. There's several groups out right now making their way. There have been a few coming over on this right-hand side. It'd be nice if we could get some smaller groups to come through. Right. So once they come in, we got to make sure that they're in range and really low, right? If they drop down to treetop level out there, they're going to be good. You see these on my side? Yeah. They're low enough if they come over. They're flaring a little bit on us. Our blind of the decoys, but they're coming in close, but right at the very end, they're starting to peel out a little bit to the right and left. There's a few right there. Here we go. There's about 15 in there. There's that group in front of us. They're coming over the trees like a want. They're a little bit lower than the last couple, so this may give us a chance here. I'm hearing birds all around us. Here, we got a single right here. Kill it. Here we go. Nice shot. Bird down. Good, Good job. First crane ever. <laughs> I love it. It was awesome. All right, so we need to sit down. Get ready. Yeah, get back down because they're liable to come in from anywhere again. I didn't even see that bird. That was great. <sighs> that is really <laughs> awesome. It's so exciting when those things come through like that. So many birds and all of a sudden they can come from anywhere. They can. They can I mean, you got thousands of birds coming from this way, but so many have made their way behind us and, and they you, kind of just circle and fly around. Is. You don't know. You're expecting them to come from the front, but luckily you saw that one in the back. I hear some behind us right now. We've got plenty more chances it looks like. Yeah. Here they come, so I'm loaded up and ready to go again. The thing you gotta watch out for now is you rely on one more bird. Yeah. So you gotta be really careful. Shooting a single is great, but if these birds come in in 10 or 15 like they have been, you know, be careful on that next shot. I'm gonna make sure that they're not going that fast and I either take that first bird or that the very last, the last one. one. But there's more coming over the trees right now. They're coming in like I want them, but right at the end, they are starting to flare. I want to pull a few of these decoys and see if that doesn't help. All right. These birds here, they look good right now. This may be it right here. They're going to be a little higher than that last one, so you may have to lead this bird All right. just a little bit. All right. Get ready. They're going to do it. There we go. I've tagged out. <laughs> That is awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Your second sandhill crane. Hey, this could not have worked out any better. We got to see so many <laughs> birds. Had two birds fly right over here. That worked out great. It did, and they're still flying all over. 
I mean, there, there's birds coming from every direction. And I tell you what, this was really exciting. I can't tell much I appreciate you bringing me out here to do this. This was an absolute blast. Oh, I love it. I love sitting here watching as much as I do shooting them myself. And you have put us in a spot where those birds, you knew right where they were going to be and right where they were going to feed. And we just got right in the travel corridor. And man, we have seen some birds. We got to get out there now and tag your bird. Got to go out there and take a look <laughs> at what we got. So here we go. What a beautiful bird. And this one has what I would call little red on top. Right. An adult bird will have no feathers on its head and it'll be this red skin all the way to the back of its head. I'm gonna mark little or no red. Correct. It's gonna ask if it has a leg band. There's no existing bands on this bird, okay. so that's gonna be no. No. All right, the next process is when you apply, you get a band and this gets attached to the leg of the to bird. To the leg. All right. But you'll need that number there, the All 2039. Right. 2039. Of course, I'll let you do the honors. All right. When you tag a crane, you come up here above this knuckle right here, and you'll want to wrap it twice and then lock it in. There you go. Once it's locked, it's locked. Right? Once it's locked, it's locked. You'll feel it click when you get it in there. So, Brett, an interesting thing on this Sandhill crane hunting is that you put in for the lottery, and if you're drawn, you're actually sent a link to where you go and have to take a test that shows me exactly how these birds look in flight, how they look juvenile, and the reason that is, is for what? There's a concern that hunters will mistake a sandhill crane for a whooping crane or a great blue heron. So the test has questions to make sure that you can identify the difference. There's a lot of shoot, don't shoot questions. You may have a scenario where you can't tell what color a bird is. It's flying in, but you can't tell what color it is. Well, if you can't tell what color it is, you need to be careful and not shoot that bird because it could be a whooping crane. Being in law enforcement, I feel like having a sandhill crane season actually helps protect the whooping crane because now you're putting hunters in the field who are educated in what whooping cranes look like, the fact that they need protection. And there's never been an accidental shooting of a whooping crane in the state of Kentucky by a hunter, correct? No. Well, we're gonna get this bird picked up. The only thing I gotta make sure I do before I process this bird or before midnight, I have to telecheck and put my telecheck confirmation number on here. That's it. But we, at this point in time, we're, we're gonna go check our other bird out. Yeah, let's go get it. All right. Wow, look how there's no feathers and look how much red is on the head of this bird. Correct, that would be considered an adult. You'll see on an adult bird that you have a lot more tan in the wing. Just a beautiful bird. You know, it is just a stunningly beautiful bird. A lot of people don't know, but these are excellent to eat. Oh, they're great. The nickname for them is they call them ribeye of the sky. <laughs> it doesn't get much better than ribeyes. You can grill it, fry it, bake it, you can do whatever you want, but I like to take that breast and go ahead and cut it in strips and then soak those strips for a couple of days in salt water mm -hmm. and get some of that blood out and it makes for much better table fare. Yeah, and look, we've been outside the blind now for a good 30 minutes or so, and the birds are still flying in. And this would be a spot if you were gonna hunt tomorrow, you'd come right back here and have another opportunity. You could, you could come back to the same spot in a day or two. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm excited to get these things on a hot grill, I will tell you that. They're great. Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Here's a really nice buck that was taken by a crossbow by Sammy Brewington, and this deer was taken in Barron County. Nice job. Here we have Ashlyn back hunting with her dad, Matt. They took this nice doe from Anderson County. Congratulations. Four-year-old Jackson Lee Barnes is probably hooked forever now that he's caught his first bass that was taken in Henry County. Nice job. Here we have a really nice buck taken by Andrew Beeman. This is a nice buck that was killed on his Pawpaw's farm in Brookville, Indiana. Congratulations. Check out this beautiful bull elk that was taken by Jimmy Elgood. This bull was taken in Perry County in the second week of bull firearm season. Nice job. Here we have Drake Robichere. He's holding his very first trout ever. Congratulations. Check out this really nice 15 pound catfish that was caught by Hunter Collier at Charlie Cook Lake. Congratulations. Here we have 10 year old Eli Harris who bagged his very first squirrel using a 410 shotgun. This squirrel was taken in his Papaw David's Woods. Nice job. 
Here we have a really nice bass that was caught by 11-year-old Luke Parker in a private pond in Russell County. Congratulations. Hey, if you're interested in the St. Hill Crane Hunt or any of our quota hunts here in the state of Kentucky, including deer and waterfowl, the deadline for sign up is Monday, September 30th. Remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles. I hope to see you in the woods or on the water.